All right, so I just want to take a second and learn a little bit more about you guys. When was a time that you felt like you were able to identify your people? Yes. I think uh, being a fan of a team that sucks really helps you identify your people. I'm a fan of Tennessee basketball, which Tennessee most of the time sucks at everything. Tennessee is state? Uh, it is, it is, if you didn't know. Uh, shout out to geography. Uh, but uh, I went to a Tennessee game out here in Phoenix. It's the one time they've ever played or will ever play out here again. And they beat the number one team in the country. It will never happen again. And it was the greatest sports moment of my life. And as me and my wife stand up in this arena of thousands of people, uh, as all the fans of the other team sit down, there are like five people wearing orange for Tennessee, just like us. And we're all pointing at each other like, these are my people. You get me. I love you. We're best friends for the rest of our lives. Yes. They became my people. Oh, I love it. That is so good. Yes. How, Man, how about you? I know. The thing, the thing with me, like, I'm from a really small town, so if there is ever a chance to meet somebody from my town when I'm out and about, like, it's kind of bananas. Like, the odds <laughs> of that happening are it's true. almost nothing because my town has, like, 7,000 people in it. Like, very small town. And so the other, like, the last year, we'll say, I was at a coffee shop, and I was, like, drinking coffee with a friend, and then there was this lady that I recognized. I thought I'd go say hello to her, and she was with her daughter. So I went over, and I was wearing a shirt that represents my general region of the country where I was from. And she was like, oh, we lived in that place for a while. I was like, well, that's cool. Where are you yeah. from? Like, what part? And she goes, Heath, Ohio. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> Heath, Ohio, population 7,000 people. That's where I'm from. And we, per we proceed to talk about everything from like the Burger King to the car wash to all the little places that people used to hang out. Because this is, this is like the, the 0.000001% of people that know about my little town. And oh. I felt like I had this connection. It was beautiful. That is beautiful. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Of course. I love it. Well, hey, how about you guys figure out in your group, what's a time that you felt like you found your people? It was the first day of my eighth grade year and I was so excited about my brand new school planner. But it wasn't the planner that I was excited about. It was my brand new 12 pack of metallic gel pens. 
I could not wait to color code all of my homework assignments, draw in beautiful inspirational quotes, and put all of my friends' birthdays into my calendar. And as I was daydreaming about how aesthetically pleasing my planner was gonna be, I, not, I noticed out of the corner of my eye that the girl sitting next to me was pulling out her school supplies. And to my surprise, she pulled out the exact same 12 pack of metallic gel pens. I instantly knew we were gonna be friends. Well, the class period got done a little early and the teacher said we could move our seats. So I pulled my desk over with some other girls and we all went to calligraphy heaven as we just drew all of these things on our planners with my metallic gel pens. I felt like I had found my people and it was just the first day of school. It was my new found gel pen community. Now, we all are part of lots of different communities. Maybe not a gel pen community for you, but we're part of lots of communities, some by choice and some by default. For example, you live in Phoenix, Arizona. That means there's a lot of you in the room that are probably die-hard Arizona Cardinal fans. Hopefully by now you know it's not a good idea to get too close to a jumping Choya. And chances are you probably have access to a pool either in your backyard or a friend's. But we're also part of lots of other communities too. For example, your school community, maybe your sports and club teams, the people that you hang out with after school, and right here, your small group community here at CCV. And we all love it when we feel like, I have found my people. We love being a part of communities. But we don't just love being a part of communities, we need community. A recent study done in 2020 found that 79% of teens in your age group feel lonely. In a generation that's seemingly the most connected it's ever been, there's still this deep ache within. And that deep ache, it's been studied and researched and identified. It's been identified as the need to belong. We need to belong. We need to be known. We need to be loved. And the Bible tells us that God created us that way. And his solution for our belonging is relationship with him and relationship with one another. Now, we've been working through this, this study where we've been talking about the greatest movement of all time. And it's recorded in the book of Acts. Now, this movement gained momentum just after Jesus' death and resurrection, which proved he was who he said he was and his teachings were trustworthy. Now, the Christians were coming together and they were trying to figure out, how do I live a Christ-centered life? So we pick up in Acts 2.42, and it's actually titled that the believers form a community. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what it says. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Fellowship is just a fancy word for community. And to sharing in meals and to prayer. These Christians formed the greatest movement of all time, not in isolation, but by coming together and forming real relationships. The kind of friendships where they had each other's backs. It goes so far that they began sharing all of their belongings with one another. As followers of Jesus, we need authentic Christian community where we can motivate one another towards love. Now, what do I mean by authentic? Well, it's a lot like Finsta accounts, you know, where you, you present your most true self, imperfections and all. But in all seriousness, let me give you an example of a time that I saw this lived out that made a really big difference. A few years ago, I was a small group leader to a group of eighth grade girls. And this one girl in my group in particular was really challenging. She, she some weeks would show up and she was so excited to see me and greet me. And then other weeks it was like she had never met me in her life. She would give me the cold shoulder and totally ignore me. Well, she even went so far sometimes to lie and maybe even say really mean comments to some of the girls in the group. And it felt like she was just trying to get a reaction out of me. It was really, really hard. Well, one week, we just stayed back a little bit longer than everyone else, and she started opening up to me, and she started showing her authentic self. Turns out, she had just moved in with her grandma, and her mom had gone back to jail. She was feeling angry and abandoned and alone. She wanted to figure out, how can I let Jesus in to help me with all of my resentment? 
Well, I instantly felt all of my frustrations just melt out of me. And it was replaced with this overwhelming amount of love and respect. This girl had been dealt a really hard hand, but here she was, showing up week after week, doing her best. She was acting really tough because she was afraid that she wouldn't belong if people knew what was really going on in her life. But she had the courage to let down her walls and she learned that she was loved and accepted even in the midst of her struggles. It was really, really incredible to witness. And I finally felt like, man, I, I understand and I now am able to think of ways that I can love and support you through all of this. But it required her letting down her walls and really revealing her authentic self. It was in that space, authentic relationship was formed. And once we have authentic relationships, then we can have the courage and the confidence to motivate one another towards love. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 23 through 25, is a message to a group of Christians. And here's what it says. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. There's a lot of people telling us how to live our lives and not all of them are on the right track. In fact, we have an enemy that's doing everything he can to get you off course. But this verse serves as an encouragement to us that we should practice the habit of getting together regularly so that we can remind one another about the hope that we have in Jesus. And when we do this weekly or even daily, we can have great confidence in God's good plan for our lives. Just a reminder, as followers of Jesus, we need authentic Christian community where we can motivate one another towards love. So this week, I wanna challenge you and I'm gonna give you three different challenges and I want you to pick just one thing that you can work on over the next few weeks. The first is this, work towards authenticity. It takes time to build relationships and it takes time to be real. Commit to attending your group weekly and showing up and showing your true self. I am telling you, it is so worth it. We do not want you to be one of those statistics of teens that feel lonely. Keep showing up, being brave, even when it's uncomfortable. Two, don't give up. We know that some of you, maybe you've been a part of your group for a while and you feel like it's just not as fun as you'd like it to be, or maybe you're not as connected as you wanna be. Or for some of you, maybe it's a little tense and awkward because you had a fight with someone and, and you've not resolved it. When this happens, not if, when it happens, lean in. Figure out a way to get to the other side and resolve this problem. Maybe that means you need to host a get together. Or for some of you, maybe you need to make amends with someone. But when you hit the wall, figure out how to get to the other side of the wall without having to jump ship and hit the same wall in a different group later on. And the third is be a motivator. Maybe for you, you feel like you're authentic and you feel connected to your group already. So for you, you need to motivate other people in their faith. Maybe you need to have eyes for the new kid in your group, or maybe you need to start a Bible study. But your group dynamic, it starts with you. So those three things again, work towards authenticity, don't give up, and be a motivator. Pick one of those things, and, and you're gonna have time to talk about it a little bit more in your group in just a few minutes, but there's one last thing I want us to do before we head to our group. The book of Acts talks about how the followers of Jesus would get together in fellowship or community, but they would also get together and share meals with one another. Now, when they're talking about sharing meals with one another, they're not talking about just getting together for tacos and hamburgers. They're actually talking about coming together and sharing communion with each other. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna take communion all together. But the reason why we do this is so that we can pause and reflect and remember God's great act of love through Jesus's death on the cross. By eating a cracker and drinking a cup of juice, 
we pause and reflect that our sin created a barrier between us and God. But Jesus' death on the cross made a way so that we could have relationship with God now and forever. So I'd like for you tonight, as you take communion, to just think about the fact that we're a part of the greatest movement of all time. This movement, it's not gonna fizzle out, it won't fade away, and it's not some fad, but it lasts forever. Would you pray with me? God, we're just so grateful that you love us so much that, that you wanna have relationship with us. Lord, I pray that each person here would feel the comfort to be authentic and form real relationships with the people in their group. May we be a group of people that motivate one another towards love. Amen.